Hey guys, welcome back to Guitar Lessons from Spain. Today I'm here with Luthier Edmund Bloschinger. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Like many luthiers, you started out as a cabinet maker. Yeah. Uh, what brought you to guitar making? Well, I was, even as a kid, I was always in love with the guitar. And uh, since I had this good training as a cabinet maker, so I wanted to go further and try to make a guitar. And then by, uh, by accident, I, I uh, had the chance to be, in, be in an apprentice of a guitar maker near my neighborhood, about 30 miles from where I live. And this is how I started. You also attended the Romanios master classes uh, here in, in Cordoba. Cordoba. Yes, this was, this was really one of the most interesting and, uh, I would say, important things in my life. To be in, a, I think it was in 1988, in a class with Jose Luis Romanios in Cordoba. Uh, for those of the people who are listening and don't know who Jose Luis Romanios is, can you explain to them yeah. who he is? Jose Luis is one of the most important guitar makers of last century and now. I think he's not working anymore, but he is not only one of the best guitar makers. He's also one of the most important historians about the guitar. So actually I got to uh, interested in him when I did read his book about the Torres, that, uh, about Antonio de Torres, the book he made. And this was for me mind opening. So. Uh, well, tell, tell us about what you learned at the master class. Did you make a copy of the famous 1973 Romanios? No, it was, or? no, it was, uh, I don't, I don't even know which uh, copy it should have been. I think it wasn't a copy, it was just to make the guitar you wanted to. So basically, we had every day, we made a guitar there. I think we've been 12 or 14 apprentices in this course. And uh, at the end, we got every day, we got lessons, and he encouraged us to go back in history for traditional guitar making, like Torres did it all his life. Wow. Because Torres, if I maybe, I don't know if all your uh, viewers know Torres. Torres was the man who, in around 1850, in he used to live in Almeria in Sevilla, and he brought, basically invented the guitar, uh, how it is nowadays, the modern classic guitar. Bigger body, then he, the scale lengths between 640, 650, 660. So he basically was the guy who, he's just what Stradivarius is in the violin, Taurus is for the guitar, in my opinion. And. Uh you, did you learn about also Hauser from Romanios, or is that something that you picked up? Because you, you come from the, the Torres yeah. Hauser. Yeah, I mean, Hauser school. basically uh, is uh, followed Torres in a way, because Hauser, in, he was in Munich, and uh, in those days, every, every year, they had a, a guitar society. This is when Miguel Jubet came to Munich and played there twice a year, I would say, and Hauser always, this, I read this in a magazine, from 1930 or 28, whenever it was. So Hauser always was interested in the Torres guitar of Miguel Jubet. So he came to the hotel and measured the guitar and was trying to make it in a, in a Spanish style. Because the, the difference between the Spanish and the German style in those days was how you mount the heel hmm. to the top. Oh. So the German style was like the violin, you make the body, and then with the dovetail joint, you bring in the neck. And the, the Spanish way is different. You have the neck, and then you glue the neck to the top, and then you bring the sides in. So it's not, it's completely uh, assembled. Different. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, so then I think he made guitars every once in a while when you bet came to Munich. He showed him an instrument, and this is, I think, around 27, 28 was when Hauser the first decided to go in the classical guitar with the Spanish style of instrument. And uh, this is also when Jubert then brought Segovia with him. So they shared concerts. So this is probably, as far as I know, that how Segovia and Hauser met. And this is, it all comes from the same source, the traditional guitar. From Torres. Wow, nice. Um, you so you come from the Torres Hauser school, mostly Torres, yeah. and that's been like um, 
important part of your building, but also you've had an association with the Romero, specifically yeah. Pepe and Celine Romero. Yes. And I'm curious as to how that has affected your style of build. Well, I think in the execution of work, like uh, how you make a nice looking and, and perfect handcrafted instrument, was I already knew that probably before, but it helped me a lot work to find out with them how uh, a player needs an instrument, what it has to do for him, how easy it is to play. So stuff like this I learned with them. It's like if you if you're a car designer and you, and you make a race car, you need a driver who really can drive it to the limit, right? So this I got lucky to to be in touch with and, and then I uh, got introduced to Pepe and Celine and they helped me a lot. Was there, is there a difference, like, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the Miguel Rodriguez guitars yes. that the Romeros yeah. use, um, is there a difference in the uh, response of the string the, um, compared to a Torres? It's, it's actually, yeah, there is. <clears throat> the Torres, all the Torres I've seen, and uh, they're very easy to play, so is the Rodriguez, but the attack on the Rodriguez guitar is a little different. And it's, it's, Rodriguez developed his own style, but also based on the traditional uh, guitar making, like use. Uh, also, they, it's hard to compare because Torres never made a cedar top guitar. Mm -hmm. This came up in the 1960s. And uh, Rodriguez made many, many really wonderful cedar top guitars. So his, this is where, what they're known for. What have you learned? Like that you, like, um, you, you, you have two, uh, two models, or at least two models. Your, yeah. your main concert instrument, um, can you tell us about the sound and it's the influences that you have on that instrument? Yeah, I had a chance to get a plan from uh, Miguel Jobet's guitar, which is FE09, which is now, I think it's in the Casa de la Musica, it's a museum in Barcelona. So I had a, had a chance to measure it, to make a, a copy of the plantilla, you call it the, the outer surface of the outer line of the guitar. And this body shape is my, whatever called Jobet model, it has it's not a copy or a replica of a Torres guitar, it's just influenced by that body shape and the interior, how I think a good guitar can be. So, and then I have a bigger model, a concert model as well. And the smaller one is a little bit more uh, lyrical, I would say, and the, the, the bigger model. It also depends on the body shape of a, of a person, if you're, because the, the armrest's a little deeper, so, whatever you, you can say it's louder or it's, and it's, it's up to the, to the player. So it's not that I say the, the bigger model is better than... It's. Well, they're, they're both traditional and yes. I love how you've got the three lobes on the headstock. Like yeah. I'm crazy and you've, you obviously uh, brought that from Torres yeah. to the guitar. Yeah, this is, uh, this is to me, uh, I think this the most elegant head stock shape and to me it's like uh, the scroll in a violin so it's I, I totally agree I, I, yeah. I love the, I'm crazy about yeah. the three lobes and yeah. Torres did he was a genius he really was and I had the chance to take take a look on many Torres guitars and I'm always with each of one I'm, I'm, I'm surprised what he did there and what he did so it's this man knew how to do it uh, let's talk for a minute about strings. Uh, what brand of strings do you use and tension and um, what do you look for um, in sound wise when you're when you're testing out when you after you're done with the guitar to make sure that everything is is fine like yeah uh, what well first what brand of strings do you use and tension? I used for a while, for many years, I used Sabre strings, yeah. the yellow card strings, the 520J to test my guitars. And nowadays I use uh, Pepe Romero and his son, Pepe Junior. They, they have their own line of strings made by La Bella now, which, and there's one, once, uh, there's one box of strings which I really 
like, and this is based on an old formula of La Bella, of the nylon formula. It's, it's called the Pepe Senior string by the Romero strings. For, for me, it's important that uh, I have on each, on the next guitar, always the same string. So I use this as, so then I can tell, if I would change strings all the time on a new guitar or on the next guitars, uh, then I don't know anything. So I, I'm looking for, my guitars can have high tension strings, but I don't, I do not like carbon fiber strings on my guitar. I don't like the sound. So you're looking for a consistency of sound between instrument to instrument so you can test yes, it? Yes, exactly. That's why I use the same strings or... or um, because then it's up to the player anyhow, whatever he wants to put on. Interesting. Uh, do you play guitar? I play a little bit, but not uh, on, a, on a high level. Well, uh, t tell us more about that. I, I've heard that you kind of view yourself as like a uh, repairman or a designer for cars and like you're the designer and the person playing is the Formula One yeah. race car test driver. pilot. Yes. Yeah, yeah, test pilot. Tell yeah. us more about that. Yeah, because I think uh, even if if you just play kind of mediocre, if you play, you, you cannot really get out of the guitar what's in it. So my son, for example, he was used to be a pupil of, or is still a pupil of Pepe Romero, and he's a great player and a great maker as well. So whenever we have a guitar of his ready, or he has a guitar, or I have one ready, so we meet and we always string it up together. So I go to his, his workshop and he comes to mine, and it's, then we string it up, and bring it to life, and tune it up again, and play a little bit, and then we go to, Pizzeria, I have a, go to a restaurant, come back after two hours. It's so interesting how a brand new guitar develops in a couple of hours. That's really, it's always fascinating. It's, it's like, uh, do you, do you uh, you're from Bavaria. Yeah. And, um, do you do the pour over Melita coffee where, uh, where you grind your beans and uh, you have like the coffee and then there's this bloom that when you pour the water over the, yeah. that, do you know what I'm talking about, or you? Don't? No, not really. Oh yeah. man. Okay. Well, we we got to talk coffee, guitar players, yeah. and coffee. Yeah. We're yeah. we're crazy yeah. about it. Uh, when when you grind your own coffee and it's fresh coffee, and you put it in the Melita filter inside the ceramic right, cone, right. and you pour water on top, yeah. there's this beautiful bloom where it just yeah. it just like bubbles and and foams. It's just it's just my amazing. mom does it like this way. Yeah, my mom does. So whenever I go to my mom's house, this is how we have coffee over there. I personally have an espresso machine with a, and but I gr to, to grind the beans, I think it's really important to have fresh beans. You know, I, when you mentioned about the guitar, like yeah. developing over when you put the strings on, I just thought about the bloom of the coffee. No, because it, it's a little bit, the guitar, when it first gets the strings on, it, it, it has to adjust the top, everything, because it's, you have tension on it. So this is what I mean. And you let sit it for a while, and then you come back, and it's very, very fascinating. And you, the the birth of the guitar, basically, the that's, birth of the sound. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and uh, thank you for watching, and uh, tune in for the next video of Guitar Lessons from Spain. Bye. Bye. Enjoy your guitars. <laughs>